Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Power of Visual Branding on Social Media webinar. Um, we're going to take a few minutes just to let people pop in, um, and then we will get started. But we are so excited that you guys are all here today. Also, feel free while we're while we're waiting to go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. We would love to use this as a networking opportunity for everyone that's here, as well as a webinar. So um, feel free to drop um, your LinkedIn link and um, who you are, where you're from, all of that good stuff in the chat. Yes. Um, so. <clears throat> I think my Wi-Fi is a little bit ropey. We've got a bunch of um, the site team that will be joining us as well. Um, so if you've got any questions um, throughout the webinar, feel free to pop them in there and um, they will be able to help you all out. Yes, this is what we like to see. Connecting people. Love it. I see a lot of customers here as well. So that's super exciting. And maybe we'll see some of their content, the customers that are here. We're, we're excited to talk through it. Cool. Well, we will go ahead and get started in, we'll say, two minutes. Um, also, feel free to throw any questions in the questions tab that you already have. And as we walk through um, the webinar, any questions that come up, and we will answer them at the end. Yes. While we're waiting, just for a few more people to join, um, I thought I'd bring up the interesting topic and just quickly ask everybody. We know there's been a lot of um, chatter or talk around verification badges. Obviously with Twitter, that was a big topic. And I don't know if anyone here has had notifications, but I recently had notifications on Instagram. Um, and it was the fact that you can request to be um, verified. You can either join um, a waiting list. There's two workflows that people are getting. You can either join a waiting list um, or you can pay, um, I think it's $11.99 per month to have your blue tick, your verified tick. And I think it begs the question of how much value does that add anymore? I know, or I think, I'm not 100% sure, there were two types of verification on Twitter, whether one of them got removed, I'm not sure. But I just think it's interesting that Instagram is, seems to be following suit as it always does. Um, so it will, it will be interesting to see how that rolls out. And if something like that comes to TikTok as well, because yeah, we know all social like to follow each other. I know. I, even though I work in socials, still get confused about which verification badge is like the actual verification badge. Can I trust this one? Um, or is this just something that someone paid for so yeah there seems um, to be a lot of scams out there because people know if you are an influencer or if you're uh, making a conscious effort to grow on social that having being verified adds to the adds to your um the credibility of your platform which is yeah absolutely more brand partnerships and more revenue absolutely Cool. Well, it looks like we have a lot of people sounding off in the chat. Super exciting to see um, everyone connecting. Um, definitely feel free to chat in there as much as you all want. Um, but I think we're coming up on the four or five minute mark. So we can go ahead and get started. Um, if that's cool with you, Jazz. Sure. Let's go. Perfect. So this is the power of visual branding on social media. Uh, hey, we are Jack, going... 
your screen is. Oh. No worries. <laughs> I thought it was shared. That's okay. Let's. Okay. <laughs> now we can get started. Go ahead, Bailey. Amazing. So um, welcome everyone to the power of visual branding on social media. It is not a webinar in 2023 without a technical difficulty. So glad we got ours, ours out of the way um, at the beginning. Um, I am Bailey Hand and I am the marketing specialist at Slate and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Jazz. Jazz, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Sure, I am Jazz Vina, um, known as Jazz. I am social and content manager here at Slate, and I am joining you from the sunny country that is England. Uh, and I live in Birmingham, so let's go. Perfect, cool. So um, I know that we've said that we've seen a lot of customers in the audience here, um, but for those of you who aren't aware of what Slate is and who we are, um, we are a content creation platform for brands, um, allowing um, brands to upload all of their branded assets, fonts, colors, um, everything that helps to um, identify visually with the brand to um, a creation portal and then you're able to create social media content um, from an iPhone, Android, or web. Um, so we're super excited that all of our content today is actually from Slate customers. So if you're not familiar with Slate, you'll get to see um, what um, our customers are producing um, in addition to the power of visual branding on social media. So I'm super excited to have you guys with us. If you do have any questions about Slate specifically, we have a ton of um, people from our team in the chat today um, that are will be happy to connect with you or help answer any Slate specific questions. Um, and, then, and then at the end, we'll also have a Q&A. Cool. So let's go into some housekeeping items. Um, everybody, most people have already now used the chat to introduce themselves. Um, thank you so much. Um, use the chat and reactions feature throughout the webinar. This is a very conversational webinar. We want your thoughts, opinions, um, comments on things. Um, we will also be uh, we will have a game in the webinar. Um, so we will be encouraging everyone to pop their answers into the chat when that happens. Um, any questions that you have will be answered at the end of the session. Um, we do have some members of the Slate team in the webinar. Um, so if they're short questions, they will be able to help and support you um, during the webinar. Um, but if there are any bigger questions, we can answer them at the end. Um, and if you are with us or you haven't managed to join us, um, everyone will be getting a recording of the webinar. So if you've got a jump off early, don't worry. Um, as soon as it's finished, you will be sent a recording. So what's on the agenda for today? Um, so we're going to begin with talking about why is visual branding so important. We're going to we're going to talk we're going to, we're going to start with the basics, just understanding um, the basics of branding, and then we're going to go into looking at some native branded content. <clears throat> the game that we're going to play will be guess the brand. So you can already um, think about what that game might be. Um, we're then going to be joined by a special guest, um, Carter Kennedy. She is SDR here at Slate and uh, she's formerly a customer. So she used to be um, on the creative team for the Cincinnati Reds. And then after that, we're going to be looking at creating visual content on for social media. And we will have a second special guest, which will be Mike McGuinness. Some customers on here might be very familiar with him as he is probably their contact. But Mike McGuinness is um, one of our customer success managers here. So he looks after some of our customers and he's also a former customer um, that used to create content. And then we will be jumping into a and a So let's go straight in. So why is visual branding important on social media? So typically visual branding is like a picture book that tells the story of your brand in a thousand words. So if we look at the content to the left, <clears throat> all of this content is either um, a picture or a video. If we were to take away the branding from those um, from this media, 
it wouldn't be able to tell a story. So, for example, if we look at the LA Rams example at the, at the top where it says football is back, if you take away the logo, you take away the um, text, this is just a picture of a fan that's cheering. You wouldn't know that it's maybe the start of the new season or it's pre-season. Um, and if we look at another example, so if we look at the bottom right where we have got um, this example, this is a piece of content from the Detroit Pistons. Um, if we take away the branding, we take away the logo, take away the fact that it says Draft Party 2021, take away the sponsorship on the top right, um, you wouldn't have any idea about what is going on in this picture. So when we talk about branding and it tells a story, this is this is the message that we're trying um, to share. That when you've got a picture or video, adding branding to it takes that that takes that piece of media so much more further and allows you as a brand to tell your story. Now, as um, social media managers, one of the um, most important things that we're constantly trying to achieve is to create fans online. Fans are our online advocates and they help us succeed in our job. But we can only actually create fans once we start to build a connection. If, uh, if we as a brand aren't connecting with our followers, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a disconnect and we're not going to be creating that loyalty that brands so eagerly strive to gain. But once you, once you start building a connection, and you start to gain loyalty and maintain the loyalty of your online followers, that is when you'll create your fans. So what we, what we like to say is that brands really need to start thinking like their fans to create the best fans. So I'll use a personal example. I previously um, used to create a lot of content across Instagram and TikTok about being a social media manager working in social, the struggles, the highs, the lows, the difficulties, the successes, um, and a good measure that I would use when I would create my content is, if I saw this piece of content, would I engage with it? Would I interact with it? Would I find it interesting? And I was able to use that measure because I am who I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to reach other social media managers. Um, and this is how brands need to start thinking. Um, like their fans. So they need to think about what their fans want to see, what their fans want to interact with, what their fans want to know about uh, know about their brands in order to create the best fans. Cool. So let's talk about the basics of visual branding, the foundations. What does it mean to have a visual brand on social media? Um, so we're going to look at um, this image, which shout out to the rest of our Slate team. We recently came off of um, winning two Webby Awards, so we're super pumped about that. But um, we're starting with this image. And if you take away the text and those fonts, if you don't know Nick and Will, who are standing right there, you may have no clue what this piece of content um, is sharing, what it's, what it's trying to share with its audience. So you add in that text for a little bit of context. And what's great is here, these are our branded fonts. This is a slate font. Um, and so not only are we adding context of what the image is, is trying to say, but we're also adding it in slate's voice, in slate's font. Um, and then whenever we add in slate's colors, you can see our slate green or slate purple. It really helps to um, hone in on that brand recognition that our followers are um, going to be subconsciously looking for um, whenever they're scrolling through their social feed. Um, so not only is it about the Webbies, but these colors help to tell the story that it's slate at the Webbies and then jazz. Um, this just helps drive it home with the um, 27th Annual Webby Awards um, kind of watermark there. Um, so this is a filter that we actually used in our account this past week um, in Slate for our own social handles. Um, but adding all of this together takes this really um, great photo, but a photo with not a ton of context um, to really tell the whole brand story of 
what's happening here, what's happening in the world of Slate, um, and have those visual cues to help the audience understand the story a little bit better. Cool. So now we're going to jump into um, a constant conversation in the social media world, which is um, native branded social content. So it is, um, it's always a topic. Um, and I think some customers may be able to relate this, relate to this. We can obviously relate to this, um, that people think that social content cannot be branded and native to the platform. <clears throat> um, and that is because there are conversations, there's articles where people are saying, you know, if you're using TikTok, you need to be using um, TikTok text because it's searchable and SEO is on the rise, TikTok's taken over Google. Um, but we've got examples that actually um, counteract that to show that you can make branded content outside of the platform. A lot of people make a lot of content outside of the platform um, and, it, and it does perform and it does do really, really well. So we're gonna jump into some examples now. Um, and the first one is from Man City FC. If people aren't aware of um, football in the UK, it is our bread and butter. Um, and Man City, they just got through to the Champions League final. Um, but this is a piece of content. This is obviously from their TikTok account. And they're doing some behind the scenes, um, showing the player personalities. And what they've done on this piece of content is they've used a watermark, which you can see at the top right here. They've used a graphic, which is Etihad Player of the Month. And then at the bottom, you can see that they've used branded captions. Um, if you were to look at Man City's TikToks, 99% of them use this watermark here. And what that watermark does it, is that it allows them to own that piece of content. If you look at how many shares this piece of content got, it got over 3,000 shares. Anyone who downloaded this piece of content, it will have the Man City watermark on from TikTok, but also this watermark that they've added on themselves. But if you look at the performance of this, I think when I checked yesterday, this piece of content had between 700 to 800,000 views. Um, and you can see it wasn't made in TikTok. It is branded. It's not overly branded. It's not too aggressive. Um, but, you know, they've used their, their colours. Um, fonts and some stickers and I can see a question in the chat did they auto generate those captions yes they did um, so in Slate we have an auto generate caption feature um, and that's what they did and you can see that they managed to change the colours depending on which player was talking so this is a great example of how you can create content that, that is native to TikTok native to the platform but add um, branded elements to it Yeah, love that example, Jazz. Um, cool. Let's talk about Rock the Bells. So for those of you that don't know, Rock the Bells is a hip hop fest music festival um, that was started by LL Cool J. And um, they have some really awesome content. It's really, really cool to see um, music festival content, music industry content. But one, one filter asset that they have in their Slate account is this one by one um watermarked happy birthday post so pretty pretty um simple whenever it comes to in feed design but like jazz said with the man city post they're able to own that content right away with that watermark so anytime this is reshared um if it's reshared to instagram stories if it's um screenshotted and then shared to twitter then it's always going to have that rock the bells um watermark and it's always going to be owned by them and it's going to be their story to tell as their brand um so really love this in feed moment not to produce but um still really lets the brand take control of their content and take control of their story um on their um profile on their handle as well as anytime it's reshared after that and then the final example is we've got an example from the LA Kings. Um, so the LA Kings are a NHL hockey team. And this is um, an example from their Twitter account. Um, they've used a filter on this. So they've used a 16 by 9 ratio um, and they've added a filter on. Um, and the story they're telling with this is very simple. It's someone scored a goal. Without the filter, you could be scrolling through Twitter you might be an LA Kings fan. You might be think, looking for updates. Um, if the goal 
part of um, if the goal graphic wasn't there, you wouldn't know that a goal has been scored. <clears throat> Whereas if they've added it on, it instantly grabs the attention of the viewers on Twitter, people who are interested in the LA Kings who want to see a goal, um, they can instantly go, they know that they're going to watch this piece of content, which then obviously it tells a story, but it also... Um, it also creates that amazing thing which social media managers love, which is engagement. Um, so that is social content. And that basically shows that social content can be branded and it can be native to the platform that it's created on. Um, we know that social content isn't necessarily a one size fits all. We do as platforms increase in popularity and new platforms, um, new, and new platforms um, come out we do have to adapt how we make content, um, but you can brand it and you can make it native to the platform. Cool, so now we are going to head into our guess the brand game. Um, so everyone get ready in the chat. Um, Jazz is going to throw up a piece of content with um, the name and any kind of super identifying um, characteristics about the piece of content just going to cover those and then we're going to have you guys sound off in the chat to see if you can guess the brand without seeing the brand name yes um and in some of the in some of the content i have had to cover the people that are in the content because they might be a big um clue but we'll jump right in and see if you guys can guess So All right. Move. First one, we've got in feed. It looks like we've got some we've got some football guesses in the chat. We think some people are trolling us. <laughs> there is a basketball hoop in there. <laughs> there is. All right. Okay. We're yeah. starting to see, we're starting to see the answer come out. <laughs> Awesome job. Yes, yeah. it is the 76ers. Um, um, and I didn't know was, job to everyone. there was an area which I didn't cover. It was this. So if anyone had a BDI, I didn't cover the Sixers beyond that because I forgot. But yes, it is the Sixers. It is the, <laughs> the Sixers. Okay, next example. Who's this? Okay, another, another basketball example. So we'll give you that hint. Could have covered the basketball nets. Yes. Yes, maybe next time we'll cover the we'll cover the um the play field. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> Wild Wings, Globetrotters. I'm not as au fait with US sports. So I do actually feel like I'm being trolled because I could say, yeah, this is the Globetrotters. No, I know that they are in fact the Phoenix. The sun. Phoenix sun. <laughs> okay. We had a lot of a lot of great guesses on that one. Who's this? All right. This is my favorite. I love this example. Um, and makes me feel nostalgic, I will say. Any guesses for this one? <laughs> yes, it is in fact Nickelodeon. Um, and if yes. we have we have got some more examples, but if we just quickly ski over. Um, these examples, um, they go from something like the Sixers, which is a template in their account, um, which means that the graphics all say the same, the text stays the same, they can just quickly add in the text and they can quickly post this piece of content um, to Instagram as a final scorecard. Um, on the right, you've got Nickelodeon, which their iconic orange brand colour, they've just added some branded fonts and you can instantly tell that it is Nickelodeon. Let's jump to. Yeah, we've got some of that slime in there as well. Yes, some slime, slime gifts, right? We've got another example. Who's this? Can anybody guess? This one's a little bit tougher, it I is. think, unless you know the player. It is. I think we've we've got a winner. Cassie is on it. Cassie. Cassie's killing it. I think Cassie is the only one who's guessed this. Confidently, yeah, yeah, Cassie, you win. This is, in fact, the San Jose Sharks. Great job, great job. 
Who is this it? one's a little tougher. Maybe, unless you see the <gasps> Cassie. Okay. Cassie's got it. Cassie's had her wheat mix this morning. Is it morning? <laughs> that's a that's a saying we use in the UK. It might not be. <laughs> when we say Wheaties. Wheaties, okay. Sure. This morning, yeah. Yes, this is an actual fact. The Hornets, the Hornets. Um, I loved this example because it's so simple. And I had a bunch of content on this day that I um, screenshotted this. And you've just got the smallest watermark at the bottom. So it's super, super simple. But they still added their branding on it um, to show that it's their content. The last one. Who could this be? You've got any guesses? Castle. Yeah, TQL. Does anyone know their stadiums really well? Cassie does. <laughs> Cassie did. So this is all you guys. The whole crowd versus Cassie. <clears throat> I, I think, I think this is our. I thought it was a, it might be a bit tricky. Goal. Yeah, this one's tricky. Okay, we'll give you guys ten more seconds to guess. Yeah, people. Yeah, we can confirm it's soccer. So you warm. We can confirm. Carter, you're incorrect. It is not FC Cincinnati. <laughs> okay. I don't think anyone can get I'm glad that this was the last one. No one struggled with it. Yeah, no one got it. It is actually NYCFC. New York City FC. So don't let the stadium don't let the stadium uh, the stadium call out for you because it was an away game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we did this. We did this um, game just to show you how, just to emphasize how important branding is and how um, in terms of differ differ differentiating yourself from other brands or solidifying your brand online really has an impact on how people um, recognize you and know you. So whenever you're thinking about developing your visual brand identity, there's a, a few things that we thought you should keep in mind. Um, Jazz, if you want to, there we go. Perfect. Um, so really needing to take time to define your brand's values and messaging if your brand doesn't already have one is super important um, because that's what you're going to take to be able to visually tell your brand story. So you need to have the foundation of knowing that those values and what messaging your team is trying to get across to be able to develop assets that help support um, those um, values and messaging. The next thing you need to do, Jazz talked about it whenever we're talking about creating the best type of fans, is understanding your audience's needs and desires. So who who do they want to hear from? What do they want to hear about? What content are they looking for you to share? Um, and so it's super important to put your mind um, in the mindset of your followers um, and what they want to see. From there, you can use what you know about your brand's values and messaging um, in combination with your audience's needs and desires to establish your brand personality on social. So what tone are you taking? Um, what does your creative look like? That all affects how your brand shows up personality wise, um, whenever you're, you're looking at social media content and then taking all of that and being able to align your brand strategy with greater business goals is really going to help drive the impact and, um, the, power of what you're doing on social media. So with that, we are going to ask Carter Kennedy to come up on stage. Carter is a sales development rep um, at Slate here. She also was a former customer with the Cincinnati Reds where she was a graphic designer. Um, so she was the one that was actually creating the assets um, for a big sports brand to be able to tell their story um, and share on social media. So Carter, take it away. I'm going to um, pull up the Reds portal. Awesome. 
All right. Hey, y'all. A couple things. One, I'm actually really upset that you were trying to trick us on the customer examples because I thought I had that one in the bag. Two, apologize. I look nothing like the picture that Bailey just showed and I'm catfishing all of you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'll speak a little bit to my experience while Bailey uh, pulls up the brand portal. So I came from UNC Asheville where I was a student athlete and also a student worker there. So I was the sole content creator for the entire athletic department. And I also was helping run in-game social for basketball games, baseball games. I was helping operate broadcast cameras and really doing just about everything because it was a very small team. Right out of college and right before the pandemic hit, I was hired with the Cincinnati Reds. I spent three wonderful years there as a Slate customer and the digital graphic designer. And I still am in Cincinnati, but now working remote. All right, thanks for pulling that up, Bailey. So I wanted to speak a little bit to a couple of the points that Bailey and Jazz talked about on that slide about really defining your brand value and your messaging. So I can only speak to my experience of the Reds. And if I say we or I, I know I'm not there anymore, but you know, you get it. I'm basically right next door. So at the Reds, we really wanted to capture the young audience that is out there just waiting to be grabbed, really talking about Gen Z here, the ones that are on TikTok all day, on Instagram, that are really on social, that is just such a huge market to capitalize on. And also, because the Reds have such a young team and we have a really stacked farm system, we also want to capture that audience because they're going to be future Reds fans for life as these players go through the minors and they get to the bigs and then they really kickstart their careers. So trying to capitalize on that audience, you know, we wanted to use that young voice online and not to a point where we're like McDonald's clapping back to people on Twitter, but we want to be that voice that Gen Z can engage with and really want to love our content and follow along with it. Um, But also speaking to the Reds audience in particular, our audience would skew very old just because of the historical success of the team. So basically for people that don't know, the Reds were very good in the 70s and they won the World Series again in 1990. So those fans that followed along for those decades there are now older generations, right? So they're mainly on platforms like Facebook. Most of our grandparents are not scrolling TikTok. So we had to also be very aware of our messaging that depended on each different platform. So what we would say on Facebook would be very different than what we would be putting out on Twitter, just because those are two totally different um, audiences that those platforms are capturing. Um, But as our brand personality, we were trying to be young, gritty, exciting, really kind of you know, kind of um, going off of the momentum of the team and the uh, trajectory of where the team is going over the next few years. So, you know, we want to be able to be funny online. We want to be able to crack jokes and really connect with people. But we also have to understand the temperature of how the team is performing in any given year. So if, you know, they have a really bad start, like last year, they started off the season three and 22, You know, we went pretty radio silent for a little while and it's all about gauging your audience and, you know, you don't want to continue putting out the same content and not be mindful of how the team is also doing on the field. So also have to keep that in the back of our heads too. But basically, like I said, our goals were just capturing that young audience, always want to increase engagement and increase the efficiency of our content workflows and everything our team is doing. So Slate was a perfect tool for that because we were able to increase our efficiency and our engagement, our numbers were skyrocketing because we were able to brand our content across all platforms and across basically different platforms within platforms. So for example, Instagram has reels, they have stories, they have in feed posts and Slate really allows you to capitalize on your content for all three of those. So we're looking at the brand portal here, which I'm finally getting back to. Sorry, I went off on a little tangent there. So I haven't been with the Reds for about five, mon- uh, five months now, but everything that's in the portal still was what I had uploaded and I was using when I was still at the Reds. So you can see the filters that I've uploaded that are everything from talking about strikeouts to creating filters for multi-image layouts, really just kind of generic things that then we could then add brand elements on top of. You can see the fonts that we uploaded on the left. I have different backgrounds um, that all have our exact brand colors with the exact hex codes, which is really important also for the creative services department to make sure that we were staying on brand no matter what we were putting out. So we're using the same exact color red on all of our Instagram content and also our billboards or email marketing or 
even signage that was going up in the stadium. We want that from a creative standpoint to be the exact color red. So, you know, with Slate, we're not having to use the eyedropper tool on Instagram to try to find the exact same red color and try to make it match the jerseys in the picture that we're posting. So it was nice being able to make sure that we were staying within our brand guidelines. I was able to upload graphics, like you can see on the bottom right, that have all of our logos. MLB also has a parent account over all of the different clubs, and they upload their own assets that they share with all 30 clubs. So the Roberto Clemente logo, there's the Jackie Robinson logo, opening day. Some of those assets are uploaded by MLB automatically into our account. Speaking of branding, they want to make sure that their branding is used consist consistently across all 30 clubs as well. So each club has their own brand and then MLB also has their own identity that they want to make sure is being streamlined across all the clubs as well. But Bailey is going to show you guys what our web creator tool looks like and she's gonna create content within the portal here. So I've talked a little bit about how we can use these filters on mobile and you can use them when you're doing a nine by 16 story. But if you prefer working on your laptop and not on your phone, you have pretty much the same capabilities here in the web editor. You can upload photos. This is Matt McLean, number one draft pick that just got called up about two days ago. Shout out to Bailey for uh, finding some relevant photos here. You're seeing the same exact filters that I had shown you guys in the web portal a second ago, the same exact graphics. You can find all these on the mobile app and on the web portal. So say Matt McLean had just hit a home run. We can easily upload that photo from Slack or Getty or any other softwares that we have integrations with all from your phone or from the web. Like I said, you can add your filters, your graphics. You can export directly to any of your social platforms when you're on mobile or you can download it here and post natively from the web too. You can see all the backgrounds. Really, it's all the same on the web as it is on mobile and you'll have all those same exact colors to make sure that everything is staying on brand. So it was really nice being a designer that was also kind of a hybrid role on the social team too, where I had my footprints all over this. I uploaded all these assets, I created all of them, but then if I wasn't working a game, someone on the social team could use Slate and I could trust them to use Slate to make sure that they weren't using any of my assets incorrectly and they were making sure that everything that they were doing was basically creative I had already approved for them to use. So that's my long spiel. Thank you for kind of demoing how that works, Bailey, and I'll let you guys take it away. Yeah, of course, thank you so much, Carter. That was awesome, awesome. Cool, Jazz, you wanna throw the slides back up? Amazing. So um, Carter just did a great job walking us through what a real life brand portal and slate looks like and how the reds developed um, their brand identity. So we just wanted to go through some quick wins that your brand could activate on today or this week. Um, the first one being mini campaigns, the second one being key events, and the last one being sponsor partnerships. Um, so we'll just go through a couple different examples here really quickly. Um, this is a mini campaign that Burton actually um, activated on a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> so for some context, Culture Shifter is an initiative um, that Burton puts on to increase diversity um, within the sport of snowboarding. So they have a program that goes along with it. Um, but as you can see, they didn't do anything crazy whenever it comes to the Culture Shifter's creative assets. But what they did do is make it very apparent that this is from Burton and this is their culture shifters initiative with that watermark. And then another element which um, you wouldn't be able to see as prevalent here, but these colors, along with a few others, were part of their culture shifters campaign. So they used the element of color to also drive home the story of what was happening. Um, and... For a lot of you, you probably know this, but the two examples on the left are um, reposts from creators. So they also were able to not only brand live content, but they were using Slate to brand um, reposted UGC content, which is always some of the best content and um, some of the most engaged with content. So we were super excited to see how great this mini campaign looked for Burton and it was definitely a win in our book for them. Oh, 
Jazz, you're muted. <laughs> Today is not the day for me when it comes to tech. It's almost Friday. It's almost <laughs> Friday. <laughs> I'm not normally like this, I promise. On the previous webinars, they've, they've gone smooth. Um, so for key events, we're going to use um, a super recent example here from um, the Chicago White Sox. <clears throat> and they actually um, shared this campaign with us. They were super um, pleased with how well it was executed. JC Andrews, um, who was on the social team there, she led this execution. Um, and this is a way that they celebrated Dog Day. So they partnered up with a local organization, um, a Dogs Trust organization, and they brought dogs down, they brought puppies down, and they held like an adoption event so people could come down and see if they, you know, were um see if they were able to adopt a dog um they into they use the players with the dogs um and i think it's a really great example of how brands can be fun and also integrate key events in um into their into their um, everyday branding so if you look on this example at the bottom um where we've got the graphics um, of the dogs um you can actually see that they have got either neckerchiefs scarves um i remember they're called bandanas in the u.s bandanas uh bandanas that are branded with white socks so it's a great example of how you can integrate other events and still maintain the integrity of your brand and show your brand personality yes, else. yes. this morning we were running through this deck and for the life of me could not remember what those are called the bandanas tied around the dog's neck okay Sponsor partnerships, we're taking a look at um, the Jaguars NFL draft content. So um, as you can see, you know straight away all three of these pieces of content, exactly what they are. And quick win here by the Jaguars being able to use um, such great creative that was made specifically for the draft to activate on one of their partnerships. So you can see there that um, their Donovan sponsor is incorporated into each of these filters and it makes a really impactful campaign for not only the Jaguars, but the sponsor to be able to be a part of um, the Jaguars draft content or whatever event you're kind of going for. Um, but really being able to sell an extra, um, an extra piece and out outperform expectations um, with the type of content that you're creating. And now we're going to invite Mike McGuinness um, onto the stage. Or Mike, feel free to join. Um, where we're going to be, where Mike will be going um, through creating visual content for social media. Mike, take it away. Introduce yourself. Well, hello, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. My name is Mike McGuinness. I was a former customer, just like Carter. I was a former customer for the RBC Heritage, which is a PGA Tour golf event. I was running around very much like this with the phone in my hand, trying to get a bunch of content using Slate for a couple of years before I joined the team uh, last summer. So that's where I come from. I reside in Rochester, New York. So hello to all the East Coasters. I'm with you for everybody else anywhere in the world. I think you're cool too. I think you're cool too. Here's the thing. I want to start off with a couple shout outs and we'll get into it. I've got three different tips. This is like a mini version of like our best practices deck that we go over when you're a new customer with us. Um, but the shout outs go to the Professional Fighters League. Jesse and Gio, I see you. I know you're here and I see you. I just want to say hello. Also the Haley, who's with the BNP Paris Open. Also shout out to Bruce for his Wild Wings answer earlier. That got me going pretty good. Wild Wings, that's a great guess. But ultimately, I think the MVP goes to Cassie for dominating everybody. Would we agree on that? Like, she just dominated everybody, so. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, shall we? Three different tips for creating this content. The first one is going to be talking about strategizing on StoryLink. Quick story for you is that I was with my friend um, who runs a social media agency himself down in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was sitting with him at dinner, and he was at, on his phone, two thumbs. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, bro what are you doing right now? He's like, oh, I'm just going through my friend's stories. I was like, what are you talking about? They're like, they have like a hundred stories. I just want to let them know that I saw it, but I don't really watch them. Dude was just firing off one after the other. And listen, if you're a brand, you probably know that there's a lot of power and uh, like value in these stories, but you don't want people to just blow by them because you have a million of them. 
So we like to empower you to think about the what you're putting out there and how to maybe put a couple pieces of content uh, into one story at a time. That makes it a little bit more digestible, but also by combining a photo and a video or some sort of assets like we have here, it makes it a little bit more dynamic as well. So strategize on story length. That's tip number one. Let's go to tip number two. Controlling your content integrity. Okay, another personal story for you. We had a sponsorship deal with Adidas and I was running around during this golf tournament. And during the tournament, we had to make a reel. Now that was great and the sponsorship was amazing, but we had to make everything in real time. So when we're talking about controlling your content integrity, what we want you to do is create everything like prior to, get everything pre-approved so that when the moment comes up, you don't have to be running around like a chicken with your head cut off, which is what we did. It took us almost the entire day to make one piece of content. You do not want to do that. Instead of doing that, put in some filters, get something pre-approved by the client or by the sponsor or by the partner so that when the time comes, you know what you need to get, whether that's a video, maybe it's warmups, maybe it's like the actual action on the left-hand side. Maybe it's what they're walking in with the drip. What do we got? Michelob Ultra, Ultra Drip, right? That sort of thing. Make sure you know what you're going for. Have it all pre-approved. And that'll erase all of the stress that you have if you're me running around the golf tournament trying to get this Adidas thing approved. Finally, for our third tip, it's going to be all about templates. That's right. Anything that you're going to post over and over again, whether that's like scores or results or maybe it's quotes or statistics. Here we go. We got some examples popping up for you. On the left-hand side, that's a pretty, a pretty like robust template we have going on, right? Where you have the games, you have who you're playing, you've got the times, you've got all sorts of stuff. These are things that you're going to post over and over again throughout the season or throughout the week or throughout whatever your event is. And it kind of takes out all of the manual process of things because it lets you edit the text and snap it right back to where you had it designed for, as opposed to trying to make it with like your own fingers or like on web and you're trying to move everything yourself. It eliminates that manual like mistake making that could be there otherwise. And I will point out on the far right hand side, this is Bayern basketball. They are, I would say, one of the innovators when it comes to uh, templates. And the reason I say that is because most of the time when we see teams working with templates, we're working with like static imagery. You can see it on the left two sides. And those look amazing. But what Bayern tried to do is try to make the focus on the video or the action. And then they have an entire template that's almost completely transparent except for the bottom corner there. They swap out the team name. They swap out the score. And uh, there you go. They can post it pretty much after every single game using one single video that they think is a highlight to show what happened. And that pretty much brings us to the end, guys. That's short and sweet. Boom, 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 boom. I'm done. Thank you for your time. Um, if you ever become a client or if you're already a client, you know how this goes, but I would love to talk to you some more. Peace. Love it. Thanks, Mike. I was actually with Mike at RVC Heritage trying to help out with the Adidas post. <laughs> do you remember? Yeah. I sure do. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, we're going to wrap up with um, some real life holistic examples. I'm going to start here with Budweiser. So as many of you probably know, Budweiser was a really big um, partner for the World Cup, and they were using Slate to create content across a bunch of their global handles. So you can see this example here is from Budweiser Colombia. They're using it for um, Budweiser Nigeria and other, other um, global accounts. And then another thing that I wanna call out before we move on and look at some more of their content is that they did a really, really great job with the storytelling aspect through their visual creative. So here you can see um, they have filters up there that all have that Budweiser logo cut out. So they could leave these filters without their name on it and people would be able to play the guess the brand game and know this is Budweiser. I don't even need to see their name or their handle to understand that. In addition to that, they added in the World Cup story, which I think they did it in a really, really incredible way with these um, flag country cutouts that are also in the shape of that Budweiser shape. So they're using the visual to tell the larger story. This is what it looked like in real time. So we can see it across handles. We can see it across platforms on stories. And for different reasons, we have a goal piece of content where they're celebrating um, 
a goal that was scored, we have a um, matchup piece of content that's in feed. So not only are they using it to produce that live content, but they're also using it to produce the um, proactive content, if you will. And then um, this left example here, we have a scorecard that they put together. So really awesome um, campaign all around on social and a really, really great job of using their brand in collaboration with what their audience was looking at at the time, which is they were looking for World Cup content um, to tell the greater brand story. Cool. Um, and one more example that we're just going to look at is the Kansas City Royals. Um, I think someone from the Royals is on the webinar. They were on earlier. I'm not sure if they're still on here. If they are, shout out to you. Um, <clears throat> But when we spoke to the Royals recently, Grace is on um, here. She just she just shouted herself out in the yeah. chat. Grace from the Royals, love to see you, Grace. <laughs> uh, when we spoke to the Royals recently, um, one thing that um, Jesse expressed is that one of their top priorities when it comes to social content is that they want to be able to bring their brand to more spaces. So whether that is um, their home at a game, away at a game pre-season training at a separate event um brand partnership that they always want their brand to be front and center um and they were able to accomplish this um pretty easily in slate you we just saw a snip of their brand dashboard on this slide um, this is some of the content that they've been making and um, but that was something that was super super important um to them and, and they managed to achieve it um they had over or they have over 430 plus creative assets so these are your colors your um your fonts your highlight styles um your graphics your backgrounds um templates audio if you've got custom audio um graphics the the, they are what we call our assets and they had over 430 so a really really strong robust account um they actually saved um on average 50 percent of their time creating content in in slate which when we think about social media um, and we think about especially in sports when you're live in game and you're having to create content 50 percent um of your time is huge saving an absolutely huge saving um so that was great that they were able to achieve that. And uh, last year, they created just under 2,000 pieces of content in Slate. I'm sure that that will increase this year with the, introdu with the introduction of web creation and how we keep evolving web creation. Um, but this was just a great example of how creating a really robust um, brand dashboard and you can achieve some great um, things on social. Absolutely. We're big fans of the Royals around here. Um, so some key takeaways before we jump into questions. If anyone's got any questions, start thinking about them and pop them in the And chat. Mike and Carter will be popping back up in here. So if you have questions for Mike or Carter, feel free to throw that in the question tab as well. Yes. So key takeaways, branding on social media is about storytelling. We've shown that in all of our examples. Um, and it's clear that you can share an image, you can share a video, but when you add brand into it, it tells a story. It goes so much further on social. And when we do have, when there is so much competition on social media, or it's harder to get the engagement that you, you that you used to be able to achieve years ago, uh, when you add brand into it, it works harder for you as a brand. <clears throat> Creating compelling social content doesn't need to be complicated. Sometimes, um, I think. And this is typical of working in social. When we've had to create content and it needs to be branded, we think it needs to be all singing, all dancing, five million things on it. Um, and we can sometimes overcomplicate it. Slate allows you to simplify that. It it takes away the obstacle that working in so that people who work in social tend to um, experience on a daily basis. So it can be super, super simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Brands need to think like their fans to create the best fans. If you put yourself in your fans' shoes, 
um, and use that to fuel the type of content that you want to create, the type of assets that you want to create, the creative that you want. Um, that's the best way to build that connection, build that relationship with them, um, and overall increase brand loyalty and create super fans. And in actual fact, mic drop, you can create content that is branded and native to the platform. We've showed a bunch of examples here. Um, if anyone would be interested in more examples, please drop in the chat and we can make sure that we reach out to you. But we've shown a bunch of examples in here um, from a wide variety of brands, just that you can create content on social platform, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, <laughs> um, or Twitter, um, and it can look super native. Um, and personalized to you. So now we're going to jump into Q and A, and um, yep, yeah, get my. Hand. If anybody has any questions, let us know, um, and we'll be happy to answer them. If not, thank you so um, much for joining. Feel free to drop any questions in. Bailey, you were a part of that. In fact, you created that whole Adidas sponsorship. Uh, yeah. can, can you just give us a 10 second rundown of how that went? Yeah. So I was actually with Mike at RBC as like a slate consultant um, a couple years ago. And they had an Adidas pop up and they were like, can you create a piece of content, a reel about this pop up? So, yes, I was taking videos pictures there was no we didn't have any assets to work with before so it's kind of like rbc branding but like covering the adidas pop-up and then yes it was a lot of back and forth to to get that approved but it was fun we had a great time <laughs> cool well it looks like we don't have any questions so thank you guys so much for joining, um, if this is your first webinar or if you're a customer, we so appreciate you. Um, thank you, Carter. Thank you, Mike, for your guys' help. Um, we appreciate you guys as well. And um, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Um, and if not, we will see you guys next time. All right, thank y'all. Bailey and Jazz, you guys are the best. Thanks. Way to go. Way to go. Back at you. Bye, everyone. Hey, bud. Let me figure out the end of this. There we go. Okay, I found the end button. I will see you guys later. <laughs> it didn't.